Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today I am going to be water bath canning some tomatoes for you guys. Um, but before I start doing that, I want to take you guys to my garden and give you guys a little rodent update. And also I'm going to soak the tomatoes and show you guys that too. So what I like to do, and I'm going to show you guys this before going out to the garden because I'm going to let this sit, is I take any vegetable, no matter what vegetable it is that I get out of my garden or if I get it out of a store, especially if I get it out of a store, I put it in water and then I add a couple tablespoons of vinegar, um, just some 5% vinegar, and I let it soak and just kind of clean. <laughs> from um, anything that might be on it. Now, I do this a lot with my greens in my vegetable, or in my garden, because I grow an organic garden, so then that way there's always some type of little buggies on it, and that helps get the bugs off and kills anything that's on it. And then I do it for any type of store-bought thing because it will get, it will draw any bug out of it, and then it will also kill any type of bacteria or anything like that on it um, before blanching it or doing anything like that. So all I'll do is I will let it soak, while I go outside and show you guys the garden and then I will rinse them and put them in there and then they'll be ready for us to start cutting up. All right guys, so I wanted to pop out just give you guys a quick update out here. Um, so right now we don't have any dig marks, so that's good. I haven't planted out anything else, like any of our new stuff. I haven't planted it out. Um, besides like some tomatoes, but the peppers I have kept in and the lettuce, the kale, and the uh, collards that I have, I've been bringing inside. Um, I have put out the, the extra herbs that we have. So these were some extra herbs that I was growing and then these two I actually got as starts. Um, so I put these ones out and I've just been covering those at night. And so those haven't been bothered. And then the other things like some of the peppers and some of the thyme are actually starting to grow back. Like the peppers, it's like this little stem and then there's like a little bitty leaf on it. So they're not getting eaten. And then also the broccoli are starting to do that too. So they're not getting eaten, but since we have the sticky traps out and something is not getting caught on the sticky traps, but they're knocking dirt on the sticky traps. So I'm not 100% sure that I can say that there's nothing going on back here just because there is that movement with the dirt. Even though it's not getting dug up, it's still getting knocked on there. So I'm gonna give it a few more days back here. Um, I'm gonna keep putting out the sticky traps and seeing if I catch anything or if they get disturbed. And then once I can go a couple days without there being no nothing disturbed or not catching anything, then I'll go ahead and plant out the things that I have inside. But let me show you guys just a couple quick things that we have out here. So this is what I mean by the sticky traps are getting disturbed. They just have some dirt on it, but the uh, purple basil leaf is still on there and I think the piece of gum is gone. So I'm gonna put out a new sticky trap tonight. But look at this tomato plant, guys. It hasn't gotten bothered or anything like that and it's doing really, really well. And this is what I was talking about. Some of the new leaves are coming back on my broccoli. Um, this one is a sweet pea plant. Even though all of its friends got eaten, there's still one there that hasn't been bothered. New leaves are coming back on there and that one hasn't been bothered. I do have broccoli to plant out though. Um, my Malabar spinach looks amazing and cucumbers are looking horrible, but that's because it's starting to get cold at night. So I think I missed that window with the rats not digging up their roots. But the tomato plant back there is looking good. The tomato plants up here are doing good. I am probably gonna lose my okra over the weekend because it's gonna get really cold. Um, these bean plants have not been disturbed or anything like that. And then the same thing with these bean plants. These are the uh, Chinese long noodle beans. I have them there. And then I also have them, oh, ran out of focus. Also have them over there too as well. And those ones haven't been disturbed. This Malabar spinach is doing really well. We have the eggplant over here with some random radishes. The shishito peppers are growing like crazy. There's tons of shishitos all over these and little new shishitos coming in. 
and these aren't getting eaten. Um, the shishito peppers were one of the first things that I noticed that I had a problem because they were actually eating my peppers. And then the tomato plants are doing good back there. These pepper plants I have been pulling inside, but these stems on the pepper plants that were eaten, I don't know if you guys can see this, but they have little leaves on them. So they're starting to come back. Oops, tomatoes doing good, eggplants doing good, and then this big batch I take inside with me, and these are all just in trays. And then this kale plant has, they've stopped eating the kale plants, so that's a good sign. And then the tomatoes doing good, all of the herbs on the wall are doing good. And then these herbs I haven't covered up just to see if there's any disturbance and if the um, thyme is getting eaten again. And it's not, it's actually starting to grow back. So this is some thyme that's growing back. These are thyme and then these are thyme. And this whole row of thyme was eaten down to nothing. So I think it's a good sign that these are going back. Alright guys, so I'm glad my garden is starting to get better because let me tell you that this year has been stressful um, and having little rodents was just that little like topper on the cake that I was like, ah, but getting rid of them is making me happy. So I want to go over everything that I'm going to use to do my canning because now this is going to be my first canning video and I want to make sure that I show you guys everything that I use um, so that it can help you. So a lot of these things I ordered from Amazon, or I got them from Fry's, which is also Kroger's, I think, if you're on the East Coast. Um, so first thing I have is my blue book. Like, this is my ball preserving book. So this one I get from Amazon, and this is kind of like my little canning Bible, if you say. Um, it shows me everything that I need to do for canning, like water bath canning, and then also pressure canning too as well. And then it also has freezing and dehydrating in it, and then just a couple of different recipes for like sauces and different things like that that you can make. Now when it comes to me canning my tomatoes, I use store-bought tomatoes. Um, usually I get them from the farmer's market over here by my house. And the reason why I do that is because in my small space garden, I grow pretty much enough tomatoes for us to eat fresh. So when we get tomatoes, we're like, ooh, tacos or salads or this, or we're just sitting back there eating them. So I never have enough tomato plants in order to be able to preserve a lot of them. But I like to have my own tomatoes canned. So what I do is whenever it's on sale, then I go, I grab a bunch of them, and then I preserve them myself. That way I have canned tomatoes to use them any way that I like. So then the next thing I have is going to be in my big canner which um, this one we got from Amazon too as well. Um, somebody actually got it from us off of our wish list. And it has just the lid and it has the rack to it. Ah. Sorry for you guys' ears. You wanna make sure that there is a rack to your canner because you don't want your um, cans to be sitting on the base or the bottom part of the pan because then they'll break. So the canner just kind of holds everything, or the rack just kind of holds everything, and then that way you can lower it down in the water and it kind of gives it a little bit of barrier. I have seen like some little plastic things too as well um, that you can put down there, but this canner came with one, so I'm happy about that. So move this over here. So then the next thing I have um, is actually just this little ball utility preserving kit, and it comes with the little funnel and then it also comes with the little measure that you can see how much headspace you need and it'll give you the the amounts of headspace so then you can easily just measure it on the jar and then it comes with this little guy to grab it out of the jar or out of the canner and you just grab the jars out so that then you don't burn yourself and then it also comes with this little guy it's kind of like a little magnetic thing that you can pull the lids out of the hot water because you're gonna to wanna to sterilize your jars um, in boiling hot water before using them. And you don't wanna put something cold into something hot. So you wanna make sure that your jars are hot when you're getting your stuff in there. We'll go over that later. And then the last thing I got is just this little spatula. Probably could use this too as well, but this was kind of cool. <laughs> so all it does is it also has like a little um, lines on it to where you can measure your headspace, but then you just want to get the air bubbles out of it. 
And the last thing you'll need are candy jars. I have some brand new ones here, and these ones are gonna be the big quart size ones because I am going to can big things for tomatoes, sauces, anything like that. So I have some brand new candy jars that I am going to get rinsed out and washed out with a little bit of mild soap. And then I will get the water bath canner started and then we will bring in the tomatoes and I'll show you what I do the tomatoes first. All right guys, so the first thing I did is I picked the recipe that I wanted out of the book. Now I'm just going to pack just some tomatoes um, in water. Now there's all different types of recipes if you want to put them with herbs, um, if you want to pack them in their own juices, all different types of things. But I just want some basic tomatoes that I can then take out, make a sauce with, and have different flavor sauces. And I'm also going to have a lot of fresh herbs coming up in my garden pretty soon to where I can start using those. So I'm just going to make just some basic tomatoes. So the first thing I need to do, now the nice part about water bath canning is that you don't have to have like the pressure cooker, bring it up to pressure and all that kind of stuff and then freak out about it. I think it's way easier just to water bath can because all you do is put it in a thing of rolling boiling water and then let it go for a certain amount of time, whatever the recipe tells you, and then you're good afterwards. So. I think that that's way easier than pressure canning. So anything I can water bath can, I try and do that. Now I didn't know that you could water bath can tomatoes actually. So what I found out though after reading this is that you have to add either a citric acid, lemon juice, or vinegar at least 5% acidity in order for it not to go bad on you. So I am going to first peel these. Now how you peel them is basically you're going to cut off the top score the bottom and then you're going to put it in some hot water and then blanch it in some cold water and then it should theoretically easily peel right off. So we are going to do that today. I'm just going to cut off the top and then I want to make sure I core it so take the core out because I don't want that to be in my, um, in my sauce and then I'm just going to score the bottom. just like so. And then I'm just going to put that into a pot here and then do it to all of these Ah, before I start to water bath can or before I start to blanch them. Okay, now I'm all done coring and scoring um, my tomatoes. So I'm boiling the water right now. So then all I'm going to do is just drop them into uh, the water for the boiling water for about 30 to 60 seconds. And then I'm just going to scoop them out and instantly put them in some cold water. Now with the tops and just any type of things that I cut off of it, and then I will also save all the skins too, don't throw these away guys because they can be perfect for your in-ground worm bin like I have, or just your regular worm bin or any type of compost pile. So I'm going to save all of these. Now I'm not going to put them out there right now since I do have a little bit of a rodent problem. I don't want to encourage them to keep coming back. I want them to move along and not realize that I have a garden anymore. So I am going to uh, put these in the freezer as soon as I get all of these, all of them skint. I'm just going to then put it all in the freezer and then save that for later on when I can feed my worms. Okay, so I want to remind everybody this is how I water bath can. Um, you want to make sure you're reading the book and following the directions to see if it's going to fit the way that you want to do it, but this is the way that I do it. Um, so in my water bath canner, I do actually have my jars sterilizing in here. Now I clean these out with soapy water and then, and I use a mild soap. I didn't use Dawn. Um, I use a fragrance free and clear soap too as well whenever I water bath can. So I have those going in there and I'm just going to let those sterilize. And then in here, I just have some water starting to boil. And then over here, I have some ice water. Alright guys, so I like to take these to where almost you kind of see the skin, so they get back in focus. The skins are already starting to come off a little bit, so I'm just going to take that out and then toss it in there. So I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you guys back over in my little station. Okay, so just to show you guys how easy they peel off, I'm just going to take this one and as you can see, the skin just comes right off of it. 
this makes life so much easier. Um, so then all I'm gonna do is once I get it peeled, then I'm just gonna chop it up. Now you do not have to chop up your tomatoes. You can actually just put them in there whole, um, but I'm gonna chop mine up, remove a little bit more of the core off of it because a lot of times when I use these tomatoes, I'm using them for either a soup or a stew or just to add just a little bit of flavor. So I'm gonna end up blending it up anyway. So I like to start with it all chopped up. Okay, so now I have all of my tomatoes and then I also have my skins. Now you can take your skins and you can boil them down and reduce them and actually make a paste with them too as well. But I am going to use them for my worms because my worms like tomatoes. So I'm just gonna take my jar here and I have my little funnel, which one sec I'm gonna dip in the hot water and sanitize. Okay, so I just like to make sure I have everything sanitized. So I'm going to take my jars. So I'm probably gonna use more than three jars. Um, Hot. Careful not to burn yourselves guys. And so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to scoop them into the jar. Now when it comes to scooping it into the jar you can fill the jar however you want them to. You want it to be packed pretty tight um, but I like to give just a little bit of extra space just for a little bit of water. Um, now I am going to hot pack these meaning that I'm going to pour, I'm going to raw pack these, meaning I'm going to pour boiling hot water on top of them. But I like to have just a little bit of space. I'm going to pack them down as much as I can. As you guys can see, I'm packing it down. And then I am going to leave a little bit of space for water because it's nice to be able to just take it out of the cupboard and then just throw it in the pan, not have to worry about it. Like if you need to add more water or more things like that, because it'll already kind of be together. Like you don't have to add much more stuff to it when you're making a sauce. So I'm gonna try and get these even. I might actually have more than three jars, which will be super, super cool. Totally think I might have more than three jars, which is nice. You know, one of the nice parts about being able to do your own tomatoes is that you have your own base the way that you like it. So I can add just different types of herbs that aren't in the jar of tomatoes that you get from the store. And since I have this base, it's just a quick throwing it onto the stove, boiling it, adding some herbs, and then just blending them up once I get it like boiled to the consistency that I want it to be done. So I'm going to pack the rest of these guys and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt to these. Now, you can use citric acid, lemon juice, or salt, and I am using salt because I don't want to have to salt it once I get ready to make the dish that I'm going to make, um, which is probably going to be a spaghetti sauce or some other type of sauce that I'm going to use some tomatoes with but it'll keep me from having to use um, salt in the recipe because it'll already be salted. So a lot of times I can with salt. Now you also want to do it because you're preserving it too as well. So make sure you use a good canning salt or like a flaky salt. Um, and you're just going to shove this down on up in there. Now when it comes to using a table salt, the reason why you don't want to do that is because it has iodine in there and it will kill the good bacteria that is going to preserve your food and keep your food from spoiling. So you want to make sure you just want to use a good canning salt that doesn't have any iodine in there. So I'm just basically going through and shoving this all down and making sure it's tight, nice and tight in there. Now the nice part about this is that the tomatoes are so juicy that they've made a lot of their own juice. So I'm just going to top it off just a little bit. So I'm gonna grab some boiling water, I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm gonna try and squish down. So now the important thing is that you want to clean the rims of the jars. So I already added the water and I have my proper amount of headspace, which I can just double check my little tool. 
Probably use a little bit more water in this one, so I'm going to grab some. And a little bit more in this one. And then I'm just going to double check it. And we're all good. So now I'm just going to take some vinegar, guys, and I am going to clean off the lids. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some vinegar, put it on a paper towel, and then I'm just going to wipe around the lid here. And make sure the lids are nice and clean. Then I'm just going to grab the seals and put them on top. When you're putting the lids on guys, make sure that you're putting them on finger tight. You don't want to put it on super, super tight or anything like that. Um, just finger tight is fine. Make sure your lid's on there nice and straight. And then these are all ready to go in the can. All right guys, so I just have them in the canner and the water is on um, over top of them. So you wanna make sure that they're fully submerged. They're evenly apart. And then we're just gonna put the lid on it and these are gonna process for 45, 40 minutes. Okay, so those are actually gonna process for 45 minutes. They're gonna process for 40 minutes if they're like the, quart, the little quart, pint size and then 45 minutes if they're the quart size and I have the quart sizes. So that made me three jars. I am not gonna make this video any longer by showing you guys when I pull them out. If you guys wanna see what they look like when I pull them out, go check out my Instagram. It's Team Benson Wines, and you guys will be able to see that. And it'll also be the thumbnail of this picture. But I'm gonna let those process, and then I'm going to let them cool for an entire 12 hours. So I have a cooling mat right here, so when they come out, I'm gonna put them out on there and I'm just gonna leave them alone don't touch them just leave them alone and let them cool you will hear it seal by popping and so when it pops then you just touch the tops of them and make sure that they're all done before you put them up and then you'll be ready to go and they'll be shelf stable for a good long time so I'm gonna let those process like I said if you guys want to see what they look like go to my Instagram and then I'm also going to show you what they look like in the morning 12 hours later on tomorrow's video so until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.